We have our notes there. Perfect. We have the hats, we have the fire, we have the decorations, we have the fake, no, the real mugs, but no, nothing in them. Cheers. Cheers. That's not in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's so okay. Hello and welcome to Ungimmick. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Meowy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Meowy Christmas. God, you have to do it. My name is Gonzalo Souza, and today I am joined by Mr. Connor McDonald. Because it is a Christmas special, we wanted to choose a Christmas performance. So, Connor, who do we got today? We have none other than the most fabulous Aussie Wind. One of my favorites ever on that show. Let's. What are we doing? Let's get, Let's to, get it. to it. Aussie win. Thank you. We normally touch on the performance and the performers themselves and what they do. Here, I want to give props to the producers of the show because that background they have is beautiful. And it's, it's exactly what it needs to be. It's already foreshadowing what's going to happen in the end of the effect, yet we don't know yet. It doesn't make sense but it oddly fits. It's actually meaningless when you first look at it. It's just it a circle with some with some cards on it, and only later do we understand what that actually is. And I didn't even notice the background until G pointed it out. So uh, props to you for keeping an eye on that one. You know, every magician that's been on this show has tried to fool Penn and Teller, and then they tried to figure it out and explain in code how they think it's done. That's why I'm going to show you a trick and explain exactly how it's done. I'm going to give a note that comes from Denny D'Artiz's teachings. He says many times that you need to let the audience know what's going to happen. Let them be in. Let them fill the magician's shoes and go along the journey with you. Tell them what you're gonna do and then do it. And that's exactly what he does here. He tells them, I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to tell you how it's done. And you'll see that he reaps the benefits later because he's going to get the hit of the, of the actual magic trick that he does. And that's a climax and it's a huge hit. People clap, people love it, but people know it's not done. So not only are they loving it, they are putting their energy up here and they want more and they're ready for more and they are going to be excited to go along that journey with you. I was taught this at a young age from theater, but nobody likes a surprise that they can't see coming. <laughs> also, I just want to say, look at him. Look at Ossie Wind. He's, I just, I love him. I love him. Can we, can we get it? Can we try to uh, edit a little cutout of Aussie Wind right in the middle here? Uh, right, right where the mic is. <laughs> right where the, we'll put a little tight. We'll zoom in. I'm, I'm trusting my editing skills a little bit too much. But we'll, we'll try this again. Okay, zoom out, zoom out again. Zoom out again. Zoom in. Right here. Right here. And now, poof, Aussie Wind. I have no clue if I can do that. If it looks like shit, I tried. <laughs> it's going there either way. It's going in either way. I'm, I'm committed now. <laughs> Before the show backstage, I went through the deck and I uh, removed one card from the middle and reversed it. And it could have been any one of these, obviously, any one that you named. But you named the king of clubs. And I'll show you every single card, every one of these, except for one card in the middle is the king of clubs. No, 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 no. I was really sure you're gonna say King of Clubs that I took this card from a different deck. That's how sure it was. It's the only blue card in the deck. No, no, no. I was really sure. I, I don't have any other card but the King of Clubs. It's the only card I have here. These are all blanks. Every one of these cards is a blank card. This is the only option, the only card you could have named. This guy has the best audience management. And what I specifically liked is that after each kick at the end when he was revealing it, the audience would be like, oh, and you're like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. He let the audience have room to enjoy the magic while also being able to control them. And that's not easy to do. I mean, obviously he's in this Los Angeles, uh, Las Vegas Big theater stage. and people are respectful, but that's not easy. On the hits themselves, notice how they build up on one another. He shows the card itself in the deck. Then he turns the card. It has an odd back. Then he shows the faces. They're all blank. And then he gives it away. If you first show a full deck of blanks, that's not intuitive. But if you if you first highlight one card and then unhighlight all the others. Now there's a progress there. 
The first time I got fooled was when I was 13 years old. I went, I went to a magic shop, and the men behind the counter showed me the first card trick I've ever seen. And I remember I was in awe. For me, it was a miracle. I said to him, you got to tell me how it's done. And he said, well, it's impossible. It's against the magician's code. But I can sell it to you for 50 shekels. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm buying it. I, I bought the trick, learned it. And years later, I realized that even though I learned a great trick, I lost something in that store. I lost the mystery. I could never see the trick again. So I'm going to explain this trick to you. But keep in mind that once I show you how it's done, you can't unknow it. I want you to pay close attention to this line that he's about to say. He asks them, do you want to know how this trick is done? And that's going to come back into the ending because he's going to say something that's going to contradict that sentence and just look out for it. Do you still want to know how it's done? Huh? It's going to be 50 shekels a person. All right, it's the holidays, it's on the house. Aussie talks about the idea of selling and buying magic. Although for magicians, it is natural. We know how we do tricks, right? You, if you want to do a trick, you go to your magic store and you buy your trick or you buy your book, you buy your DVD, and you have your library. For laymen, it's not that intuitive. When people ask me, how do you learn your tricks? I've learned not to say that I buy them. For my character, it doesn't work because it breaks that mystery. And I've seen people visibly disappointed after I tell them that a trick can be bought and sold. In this case, Asi does it in a very natural way and people accept it and love him for it. I haven't found a way to do this with my character, with my personality. He did perfectly. He says that it breaks the mystery for him, which is what it does when you tell someone that you, you said it, when, when you tell someone that you buy magic tricks, they go, oh, you buy them? Like that is, that's kind of disappointing. And then at the end, I feel like he touches on that and, that's, and that was his whole arc. He does touch on it again. He says that it cost him and he makes a joke out of it, right? Uh, can you teach me how it is? No, I can't. It's against the magician's code, but I'll sell you for 50 shekels which we talk about self-deprecating magic sometimes, and we have a whole episode on the podcast on that. There will be a link in the description. It is self-deprecating magicians, that little line that he says, right? Oh, it's against the magician's code, but I'll sell it. The magician's all like, all they care is about money, and it's okay if we break the secrets if you give me money. Even though that is the subtext, that is not the message entirely, and nobody interprets it as such because Aussie's character is beautifully defined and his delivery is beyond perfect. Later, he tells the audience that he will show them the trick, as he did in the beginning, and he says, it's 50 shekels a piece. Just kidding, it's on the house. Very well done. If you start a joke, finish it. Even if the joke is finished, maybe get another kick out of it. And he demonstrates it here, how to do it classy and elegantly. I'm gonna come back to, the, to those words quite a bit. <laughs> so first things first, uh, you have to remember that everything on stage is a part of the illusion. Nothing is innocent, uh, nothing is as it seems, because my goal is to create a moment that has no explanation, no explanation. Uh, so the first question you wanna ask yourself is why did I place the cards inside a wooden box and not just right on the table? I did it because I had to. So let's replace this box box with a similar box made of clear plastic and it's very very similar but what's special about it is that when you open the lid it lifts the bottom with it okay so there's a little bit of a path also there are magnets on the bottom of this box and this table has a trap door so when i place it right above the trap door when i open it it will open the trap door with it and you can see that inside there's decks of cards yes decks of cards inside um, now, at some point, if you remember, I was drinking. Why did I drink? I did not have to drink. I drank because I had to for the trick to work. Uh, you see, this mug has a little bit, uh, four magnets on the bottom. And underneath the surface, there's a, a disc, a circular gear. So if I place it right about here, and if I now turn the, the mug, it will cause all the decks inside to rotate, okay? You know what? Let me just give you a much better view on this so you can really understand. This is a very strong magnet. So you understand how, how this really works. As you can see, you have all the decks in there. 
And when I place it right about here and rotate that, then in every one of the 52 decks, there's one card reverse. And obviously I took, as you can see, one deck because that was the card you named. So I had to take that one. And every other deck has one card reverse. Do you see how this could help you with the trick? <laughs> in the way beginning of this trick, he said, I'm going to show you how the trick is done. And then he asks them, do you want to know how the trick is done? And then at the end he says, but I'm not going to take that away from you because you didn't ask but you told them and then you asked if they wanted it. There is an inconsistency here. It's purely script wise. Just a little slip in scripting in not realizing that you're telling them that you will reveal the trick. So you're setting up a yes when you ask them, do you want me to show you how the trick is done? Even if you hadn't set it up, people will always say yes because first they're an audience, they will play along with you. Then of course they do, you just did a <laughs> miracle. Yeah, exactly. Of course, you are setting that up. So in the end, I get it, you want to do this kicker of, of tearing up a thing and revealing that actually you're not revealing the method and you have, you're even a bit more clever than the audience is giving you credit for. Nobody perceived it as a negative in that audience. Nobody besides us will ever point this out because Aussie is too good for that to be a point that people will comment on or a defining factor. But because he is too good, we demand of him excellence. Because of the nature of the program, because it is pen and teller, full us, and you get five minutes on that Vegas stage, it is hard to come up with a routine that has a beginning, middle, end, and a message, and something bigger for people to take home. It, it's very, very difficult, but Asi does it. He says that the real price for knowing a trick is not the money that you pay. Those 50 shekels don't matter. There is a bigger price at stake, which is the loss of wonder. Now this has ramifications, this is layered. Open message, the one that he says in his script is the real price is not money. The implied message is the real price is the loss of wonder, which then the layer deeper is the magician sacrifices himself, losing that wonder to provide the audience those moments of wonder. Wow! I didn't even think about it that way. How the magician is giving up their sense of wonder. I mean, pat myself on the back. You're welcome. <laughs> Just kidding. No, but it's like, I didn't think about it that they give it up to give it to somebody else. A, a different character, like Handsome Jack. First, he would never deliver a script like this. I understand. But let's assume that a character like Handsome Jack would be doing a script like this. The message, even if he said the price is not the money, the price is the loss of wonder, for Handsome Jack, it wouldn't be, I'm sacrificing myself to give you the wonder. Handsome Jack would be, I lose the wonder, which in turn makes me cooler than all of you. Because he is that character. He's that the, the magician yeah. model that puts himself above everyone else. Asi doesn't and conveys a much, much prettier message. Again, I know Handsome Jack would never do this. John Lubbock, I love you. You're great. I find it interesting that you're using Handsome Jack as a, as a reference, as an example. No reason for that whatsoever. No, 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 not it at just... all. <laughs> <laughs> Final remarks, Mr. McDonald? Two thumbs up. Four. Four thumbs up. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. It is. It really is. It's the first Christmas that in gimmick is... And gimmick. Yeah, we're spending Christmas together. Right. It's the. <laughs> I mean, we got the whole gang here. It's the first. It's the first Christmas since the creation of Ungimmick, the podcast of this project. So we want to take just twenty seconds to say thank you for joining us all throughout these past couple months. We hope to be here many, 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 many years to come. Many more Christmas, Christmases that we'll get to spend yes. together and with you. Uh, talking about magic and much much more <laughs> This may be the first but it is most definitely not the last Beautifully said check us out on social media at Ungimmick for Instagram subscribe to this YouTube channel and click the little bell ringy thing ding, And it will tell you when we release another performance review and other types of videos that we surely hope to bring them to you in this upcoming year of 2021 Go listen to our podcast in your favorite podcasting platform. And if you feel so inclined, patreon.com slash ungimmick. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from the ungimmick family to yours. <laughs>